Hey, how are you doing, Constance? Uh, this is Mr. Davidson with another exciting episode of Mnemonic Economics. And today we're going to use a very helpful one for your exams in A-level AP or IB um, to remember the shifters of demand and supply. I find this one very useful. It's the easiest one for me to remember. So hopefully it helps you out too. Okay, so my wonderful mnemonic device for this is cat piss stores okay remember that one more time cat piss stores okay so let's go through what each one of those actually mean so we'll look at demand first cat piss c is for compliments okay not compliments. You're so cool. Your video's so awesome. Compliments. In other words, uh, a good that goes with something else. So, what do I mean by that? So let's think about hot dogs, for example. What's a compliment with for a hot dog? A hot dog bun, or mustard, or ketchup, or maybe even onions. Um, so if the price of those compliments goes up, or down, it has an effect on the demand for hot dogs. So think about hot dog buns. So when you go into the store, if you see a whole bunch of hot dogs buns that are cut in price by 50%, 20%, whatever, um, you, may have more, you may pick them up. And when you pick them up, you've got to buy something to put in those hot dog buns. So that will increase the demand for hot dog sausages, okay? So you can see that in the diagram. The demand for hot dog sausages will shift from D to D2, just by decreasing the price of hot dog buns. Okay, next, A is for advertising. Now, of course, advertising is absolutely critical to increasing demand. Um, if you look up now, uh, Ronaldo, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo face exercises. In Japan, there's this crazy device that's supposed to um, help your face look better. And it's advertised by Cristiano, uh, by Ronaldo. Um, have a look at it. It's insane and probably doesn't work. Now this good itself is totally useless, but when he advertises it on TV, the demand for that good has drastically increased. And the price has also increased. The price, it costs maybe $60, $70 just for this ridiculous item. Okay, next, trends. T for trends. Um, best example for that, I guess, is jeans. Jeans are changing uh, all the time. I remember when I was um, at high school, flared jeans were very popular. You know, they were tight here and they had the kind of bell bottoms at, at, the, at the bottom. Yeah, if I wore them now, people would think they were rather lame. Same with ripped jeans or not ripped jeans, jeans with paint all over them, whatever. They keep uh, adjusting uh, the trends all the time to increase the demand for that product. Probably at some point, those bell bottom jeans will come back in fashion. Um, yes, and I'll be able to wear them again. Next, moving on, price is not a determinant. Now, many, many students get this wrong. So they often talk about price when they're talking about shifters of demand. No, it doesn't shift demand. It's a point on the line, not a shift of the curve. So please, please, please remember that. So many students get that wrong. Okay, next, we're on to income. So you know from your economic classes, there's different types of goods. You've got normal goods and you've got inferior goods. So if uh, people's income decreased due to a recession, they're gonna demand more of uh, inferior goods. Now, inferior goods could be something like uh, cup ramen or uh, 100 yen stores or dollar store goods, all that kind of thing. So that's affected by your income. As your income increases, you're gonna start demanding more of other goods, maybe your Louis Vuitton bag or your uh, different styles of clothing, that kind of thing. 
Okay, moving on. Substitutes. The price of a substitute will affect demand. Okay, so a direct substitute could be something like Pepsi Cola versus Coca Cola. Okay, so if the price of Pepsi goes down, then the demand for Coke is going to uh, decrease. Okay, so the price of Pepsi goes down, more people are going to buy Pepsi and less people are going to buy Coca-Cola, okay? And the opposite's true. And the last part is size of market, okay? Now, how many people in that demographic are there and is it going to increase and decrease? Now, the good example for this is I live in Japan right now and over the last 10 years, there has been an increase in the market for um, adult diapers. So if you go into this into your local drugstore, the uh, diaper aisle for babies is about half the size as the aisle for adult diapers. That's because the um, amount of population who that's aging is much greater than the population who have been born yet, yeah, the, the birth rate. Okay, so that's size of market. Okay, so that's uh, cat piss, the shifters of demand. You've got to know this. Very, very important. Okay, so now moving on to supply. Supply, remember that through stores. Okay, so how do you increase or decrease uh, supply? First one, subsidies. Okay, so subsidies, you should know from your classes, will increase uh, supply. The subsidies are money given from the government to a corporation or a farm or whatever, or a producer. Um, and that should shift um, the curve, the S curve, to S1, because they're giving them money to produce more goods and they're able to produce goods more cheaply. This, in Japan, rice farmers are the best example. Japan really, because land prices are so expensive here, Japanese farmers would, a lot of Japanese farmers would go uh, bankrupt if they weren't supported through very generous subsidies by the government. Okay, next one. The opposite of a subsidy is a tax. Okay, now uh, putting a tax on a good, especially a specific tax, uh, will decrease the supply and increase the price. Okay, so in this case, we've got from S to S2. Okay, that, that, that makes sense, doesn't it? So you think about cigarettes, if you want to decrease the quantity demanded of cigarettes, you put a tax on the producer um, and that should decrease the supply of cigarettes. Uh, next one is, oh, other related goods, okay? So uh, just again, thinking about the complementary goods, uh, what would increase the supply or decrease supply of that goods? For example, you have an iPhone, okay? Now the iPhone, has a whole bunch of accessories, okay? So the, if the price or popularity of the iPhone incre increases, uh, then the accessory business uh, will increase the supply of their goods. Uh, for example, uh, in my car, like I have a little sticky thing for my iPhone, I've got a cord that plugs it into, um, yeah, my, yeah, cigarette charger thing, um, all that kind of thing, that will increase the supply with the increased popularity of the iPhone. Okay, next one, R for resource costs. Okay, so if the resource that's used or intermediate goods that's used to produce that good decreases in price, then they should start increasing the supply of that product. For example, right now, Chinese steel is very, very low in price. That means that uh, cars around the world should be cheaper to produce, which will increase the world supply of cars with, that, with cheap steel. Okay, so moving on now. Expectations of the producers. So if the producers expect in the future to be, uh, for the economy to increase or to be growth in the economy, then the producer will either increase supply in that case or decrease supply uh, if, the, if they expect a recession. Or even with uh, regards to the popularity of their goods, um, companies will understand their consumers and adjust their supply 
accordingly. Like character goods, for example. Some characters become uh, popular at sometimes uh, one year and then the next year is some other kind of character. Um, and the last one, finally, is the size of the market. Like how many competitors do you have? Um, and that, that will increase the supply of that particular goods. Um, yeah, for example, uh, milk suppliers, if there's a way to uh, increase profits, if the profit margins of one company will increase, you'll start seeing more companies open selling milk. Okay, and that's it. So that's Capis, stores, remember them. They're very important uh, and a key part of microeconomics. Thanks very much. Goodbye.